Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures off-road review of this 2022 Infiniti QX55. It's a fun little vehicle, definitely street oriented. It's not an off-roader and you know climbing we'll see climbing the steep hill and all that stuff it's going to be a bit of a struggle for it but let's go ahead and see what it can do so there is the surround view camera system and you have the buttons right here for it so this all controls that top screen and if you push this button you can go and show the front right wheel close up of the front because I'm in drive. If I'm in reverse, it'll do just the reverse and then the off. So you basically have those three features. If I switch it to reverse, it switches that. You still get the front right wheel, but the reverse view instead. Here we are on the high speed off-road section and I'm still going a little bit slow because there's a person here close by and I don't want to dust them out. Um, but this vehicle, has such limited wheel travel and a solo to the ground that I'm not really going to push it too hard. We're going about 12 right now, uh, 15 I guess, but I'm not sure I want to go faster than this. Uh, I am the first journalist here in Utah getting this vehicle, so if I scratch or any damage anything, it kind of puts a big damper on things, the rest of the journalists would either not be able to test it immediately until they get it fixed or have to deal with scratches in their images. So I'm going a little bit slower, but this is definitely not an off-road vehicle, but yeah, about 18 miles an hour there, 19, it does okay. Just over those big bumps, it would definitely bottom out and scrape if you're going over that so I mean yeah this vehicle is clearly designed for the road it's got large rims low profile tires and they are run flats even though there is no spare tire I mean it does have the run flats to hopefully mitigate that but you can see there at 18 miles an hour you probably heard the thumps it's kind of at its limit and those bumps weren't even the big ones so let's go ahead and do the articulation hill Here in standard mode, I had to go about half throttle in order to make the climb. It was pretty easy, but you can see the vehicle struggled a little bit to transfer power to the wheels with traction. And I think a lot of this has to do with the CVT as well. The performance in eco mode was pretty much the same as standard mode except it required almost full throttle in order to make it up the small climb. Again, the performance was very similar in sport mode, except it required less throttle due to the increased throttle sensitivity. Here we are on the steep hill climb and I'm just going to do standard mode hopefully we can get through this I'm going to take an easy line until the hard spot and then I'll switch over and do the hard line hopefully we don't scrape Sorry, oh, trying to focus here, so lost my train of thought a little bit, but. Okay, here we go. That's the first hole, full throttle. And it's 
not gonna do it. Okay, let's go ahead, we'll try sport mode. But I doubt it does it either. Here we go, sport mode. Full throttle. Nothing, okay. The thing without this vehicle is it's really hard to disable traction control. So, okay, it looks like that didn't work. So we're just gonna go for an easier line. And ah, we'll stay in sport mode. Try and get an easier line without hitting any rocks. Full throttle. And barely made it. Traction control almost killed us there. But we made it. Without having a low range transfer case and having the CVT, the gearing just isn't low enough for it to transfer the torque to the ground when it's lifting two wheels in the air and applying the brakes to those two wheels. If it had something like a rear differential lock or something similar to what the Blazer has with the clutch packs on the rear, then it would most likely be able to make it up this, but as is, it just can't do it. Moving over to the easier line, I pretty much go full throttle and I'm able to make it and able to crest the top even, but the traction control almost cut power so much that it stopped it, it was just barely able to make the crest. Underneath we have a very similar setup to sports cars where the bottom is almost perfectly flat. Everything's tucked up real nice, but there's no underbody protection and it's very low to the ground. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures off-road review of this 2022 Infiniti QX55. Still weird to say 2022 already, but it is not an off-roader. But the all-wheel drive system did make it up an easier line on the steep hill climb. It has a decent amount of power. You just got to get high on the RPM. The traction control nearly stopped it from making the hill climb at all. But if Infinity had an off-road drive mode, I think this thing could be a lot more capable just with some programming. The capabilities there, but the computer systems seem to be stopping it. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos. Give me a thumbs up and comment down below. If you didn't like it and you give me a thumbs down, comment down below and let me know why. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.